Welcome to CURL 779.0. This is September 15th, 2021, and I'm Daniel. I did the release earlier this morning. So yeah, I'm Daniel. I work on CURL. I work for WolfSSL. We do CURL support. If you have any problems with CURL anytime you, for you and your company, your application, your devices, whatever, get in touch and we will help you. Uh, today I'm going to do a little presentation and talk about what's new and what's changed in this version. Some numbers of in the release, some stuff about security, three security advisors this time, some of the new changes, features, and some of my favorite bug fixes, or at least a bunch of bug fixes that could be worth uh, noticing, and something about what is coming up next, maybe. So this is release 202, counting from March 20, 1998, which was the first uh, uh, curl release then, of course. We call that curl 4.0. <clears throat> anyway, participation this time, we are 58 contributors. I think I didn't update this, so it's a little bit wrong. I think it was actually 62. It doesn't matter. Uh, we're in around 60 contributors. People have reported bugs, suggested things, written code, helped out uh, reproducing things. Uh, a lot of good people and uh, as always a lot of new contributors and a lot of authors who have written commits and a lot of new authors there as well. So we are at 947 or possibly 948 authors right now. Approaching 1,000 authors pretty quickly. If we're, we're adding roughly 10 to, I think about 10 a month right now. So we should be at uh, 1,000 authors in about five months or so. Uh, I mean, I'm just saying this because of course it's a reason for celebration. And we're, we're at 56 days since previous release. That's the ideal release cycle we're doing eight weeks that's 56 days so we're at 8580 days since we uh, created curl well since the first curl release so those are just numbers but let's get into something slightly more serious because we have three security advisors this time and i'm going to um, get into them a little bit because you want to know uh, okay the first one that we got reported actually many weeks ago and we, we've been working on it. We call it CVE 2021-22945. And we got all those CVEs in a serial uh, sequence this time as well. So we call it <coughs> use after free and double free and MQTT sending. So this is if you're using MQTT with curl. Newsflash, curl does MQTT and libcurl2. So if you're doing that, it's this is just actually a very silly bug. Ba basically, if curl, curl tries to send MQTT and it can't send the entire thing, it'll keep the remainder and try it again at, at a later point. And in that handling, it could actually uh, end up freeing that memory twice. Um, it's a pretty bad bug because it can be exploited and do really bad stuff. Uh, this bug hasn't been around for very long. The uh, MQTT support was introduced uh, not long ago. So this, I think this has only been in, in like four or five releases or so. You can go and read all about it in the security advisory that we publish about this. And if there's any details in any of this missing, go ahead and ask me and we can add it because we're trying to get all the details provided, uh, really, really detailed and documented. So the report, I got $1,000 for this, uh, I'm happy to say. Um, and for a long time, or actually for several weeks, I was hoping that this would be the only security advisory for this time, because of course we don't want security advisories because those are bad and yeah, I prefer not having security problems, but okay, fixing them is better than having them around. So then we got this one reported, which we call, well, as you can see, it's, it's a long CV number and we call it protocol downgrade required TL TLS bypass. It's basically, if you're using curl to do IMAP, POP3 or FTP, um, yeah, again, 
people will get are surprised when oh curl speaks imap and pop3 yes it does and if you're using curl then to ask curl to require tls you know require tls with these options either the ssl dash rekid on the command line or these other uh, libcurl options you you tell curl we require tls or you should fail uh, i mean you and uh, <laughs> depending on what the server responds it could actually continue anyway without using tls so it would sort of bypass that required tls thing and accidentally or silent and silently just keep on acting as if it behaved the way you asked it to do which it didn't so uh, one thousand dollar to this reporter for that uh, security flaw uh nasty but um <clears throat> uh maybe not uh, too common of a problem because it's actually i mean service typically don't respond like this but anyway bad bad curve the worst security problem this time we call it well 22947 then at the end on the cv number start tls protocol injection via mitm man in the middle so uh, this is is actually um well, I could, we could call it stupid because it's stupid, but this is um, another one for IMAP POP3, SMTP and FTP. So when, when you, you use these protocols and you allow them or tell them to upgrade to TLS at runtime, you know, they start out without TLS and they upgrade to TLS uh, in the initial handshake, you know, protocol back and forth uh, communication. Curl would then cache when you connect to it unauthenticated without TLS, it would cache responses. So it would ask something, you know, or tell the server something and it would get responses back. And then it could get multiple responses and curl would cache those responses. And then it would upgrade to TLS and then it would continue doing commands, but it would use the responses it had cached from before it upgraded to TLS. Uh, so it got the unauthenticated data before the upgrade and after the upgrade when you know it should trust the server it knows that it is the right server and everything it will still use the unauthenticated bad possibly tainted data t uh, protocol responses which of course is really bad because that would allow a, a, a man in the middle injecting server to in inject data that would be used after the tls upgrade uh, really bad $1,500 uh, in the reward to that uh, reporter which then makes us uh, in total paying 3500 US dollars in uh, bug bounties f uh, this release cycle which is not a record a record amount but uh, a lot of money and I'm really happy to be able to do this so with those security stuff, uh, security issues out of the way. And again, read up about if you're using any of those protocols, read up about the details or and upgrade and fix the issues. I am pretty sure all the distros and everything, everyone will release upgrades soon. And on this slide, I broke in the animation. But anyway, so this is what's new in this uh, version. <coughs> starting out with doing secure cookies over HTTP localhost which is I think pretty much the biggest change in this release and what I mean with this is that you know when you when when you do HTTP cookies <coughs> sorry when you do HTTP cookies uh, there's a property you can set on cookies that says secure and when you have a secure cookie the client you know the browser curled in this case should only uh, be you know, trans <clears throat> transferring, accepting that cookie and uh, sending that over a secure, uh, in a secure context or whatever. I don't, I don't remember the exact phrasing in, in the in the standard, but anyway, um, so it, that has typically been HTTPS only. But now, <clears throat> curl, starting now, curl will also uh, treat um, HTTP colon colon slash localhost as secure because starting last release curl will always treat localhost as local so we know it's local it doesn't uh, transmit over any networks 
only the loopback network. So it's it's by definition secure or not uh, transferred over any you know insecure networks. So, um, <coughs> so other tiny changes then if you're using the um, TLS backends bare SSL or secure transport. Bare SSL being a, what should I call it, a embedded focused TLS library, um, possibly with a small footprint. I'm, uh, uh, then you can support, uh, you can use this new option that we introduced a while ago. And for secure transport, which is the Mac uh, and iOS native TLS library stuff. It now supports this option as well, which has been supported for a long time in curl for other TLS backends, but now it works for this backend as well. You know, we have a lot of TLS backends and they're not all equal and they don't all support all options. So it, over time, they get more support for more of the options. Good stuff. <coughs> I'm count, I've, I've counted 128 bug fixes, but I sort of Obviously, I was lazy. I haven't updated the, these slides properly. <clears throat> Some of them. Hyper works better. So if you build, and I'm, I don't know, actually mean Hyper, the library, but I mean curl together with Hyper works better. Since uh, a while back, you can build curl to use Hyper as an HTTP backend instead of the built-in HTTP support. And that backend or that combination curl with hyper works better and better i've worked on several different things like uh, one xx responses transferring coding uh, and a few other things so it's getting better there are still things left to fix and improve and we're going forward and um, it's still marked experimental but it's better now so if you if you're interested in helping out build it run it uh, and try it out we have switched to use if you build another backend uh, for name resolving is for it's called CARES. It's a, a name resolver backend that makes um, asynchronous name resolving in the same thread basically. Um, and now we've modified that to use the ARES get adder info function instead of the previous sort of hacky approach uh, that has improved the CARES support a little bit. Uh, and it also bumped our requirement on CARES to use a more modern version modern being within the last five released in the last five years or so i think and uh, uh, here's a here's another really really niche detail you didn't know and i uh, i knew about but i haven't hadn't discovered it until now so we uh, avoid the poll call on mac os uh, and we do that because poll on mac os is really totally unreliable and if you ever use poll on mac os uh, beware so it it works it doesn't work as poll elsewhere and it also has been you know coming and going working a little bit differently on different mac os versions so we started out a long time ago finding problems and then we thought it would be fine again in some other mac os versions until we ran into problems again in some later mac os versions so we basically completely avoid poll on mac os uh, since several years back and now Someone uh, <laughs> discovered that when you built curl with this with CMake instead of configure, we didn't s disable poll on macOS. So someone ran into a problem on macOS because we use poll and not select there. So the fix is, of course, avoid poll on macOS even in CMake builds. And now it works better. Yeah, <clears throat> configure now. Um, highly annoying, but you know, we've been. Um, we've been working with uh, OpenSSL v3 betas for a long time and, and make sure that curl works fine with with all the changes that OpenSSL v3 brings um, or brought because they already released it now. But just a few we uh, weeks before they did their release, they modified how they install uh, libraries by default on 64-bit systems. So now they don't inspo install them in prefix, you know, dollar prefix slash lib anymore now they install that in slash lib 64 instead which of course broke the configure script we have that tries to detect um, open ssl installations so if you're building curl with open ssl v3 you want this fix uh, and uh, 
Carlos Configur will be happier. Anyway, <clears throat> so we also work quite a lot on improving the uh, man, man pages for, for the command line tool. So now every option, 200, there are 242 command line options and all of them have at least one example in the man page. Some of them have several. And if you find any bad examples or you miss any good examples, let me know. It was, um, I, I don't know how to say it, but that was a lot of work <laughs> to do. And now we actually, we the, the build scripts even uh, will return an error and refuse to build if it finds an option without examples in the man page. So this will make sure that we all future um, command line options we add uh, uh, will have examples in the man page or, or it won't build. Some of my work uh, on making sure that we build with can build with hyper also then make sure that I'm sort of trying to unify how we handled HTTP, the built-in code and hyper so that sort of the differences become smaller or non-existent. And in one, one of those things is that I uh, made curl this allow more than three digit response codes in HTTP 1.1 and HTTP 1.02, I think. Um, well, basically the protocol only says there should be three digits. So it's, it's just following the protocol slightly stricter and hyper already had this requirement. So now it, it made it easier to make them behave the same way. And while I worked on the hyper integration, I discovered that hyper did it right and curl did it wrong when handling, when getting content length headers, uh, when we get transfer encoding. For example, if you get tran transfer encoding being very rarely used, so th don't, don't confuse transfer encoding with content encoding in HTTP. They're different things, but you can use them for similar things. Um, <clears throat> so for example, you can do gzip uh, transfer encoding, um, which is not the same as, as uh, content encoding. Mostly everything is doing content encoding. That's how you do compression in typical HTTP. But <laughs> from the beginning, it was intended to be done by transfer encoding and curl supports it. But, and, and I had the, I didn't, curl didn't uh, handle the content length header properly when receiving transfer encoding headers. And I discovered that when I made sure that the curl with hyper and the test cases for transfer encoding didn't really fly. And so it ended up good, I think. Rarely used, so I, I guess this hasn't ever really hurt any users or anyone. So that's why nobody has reported this because Curl has supported transfer encoding for, I don't know, 10, 15 years or so, but nobody has reported this problem before. Possibly because uh, uh, the content length head header is basically impossible to use in, in, together with transfer encoding. So maybe nobody's using it, just my test cases that used it wrongly. And I am. Um, I addressed a silly busy loop case when using HTTP proxies, which turned curl into uh, uh, using 100% CPU for a short while after it sends the connect request before it actually get any contents from the remote server, which in some cases could actually be several seconds. It would um, loop far too much. It, it didn't have to happen, but it could happen. <clears throat> And using you know busy loop uh, busy loops aren't really nice. Um, I we added support for embed TLS 3.0.0. Embed TLS is another TLS backend that we support, and <clears throat> similar to Open TL, Open SSL 3, this is another version 3, and the, they also modified their uh, API in ways that uh, aren't compatible with previous versions. So we have to have if defs and stuff. And in the embed TLS case that actually went back, in some cases they they had originally one API that changed to another and now, now they've gone back to the first one. So it's, if uh, yeah, there, um, it's, it was, it's a bit of a nasty situation there, but I think we're, we have it under control and embed TLS is clearly the, the version you want if you're using embed TLS because they now finally support TLS 1.3 and some other things. So forget about the old, go with the new. 
I discovered that we had uh, let uses of str error the function into the source code by mistake because we shouldn't do that. str error the function uh, is a C function, you know, get an error string back from an from an error no code. That's not thread safe. It's documented to not be thread safe. It could possibly not be thread safe, so we shouldn't use it. Um, and we did in some cases. And I've uh, removed those uses and I've banned it from the code by making sure that our tools for checking our code finds it and reports it and warns about it if it finds it, uh, which is good. I, I, again, it, nobody has reported any problems with this. So I don't think it has actually hurt anyone, but it's just, you know, sensible things to do. And not really related to curl per se, but we moved all the mailing lists from one server to another server in this release cycle. Um, it's just, you know, information for you to know that the, the mailing lists moved. Actually, all mailing lists that Hacks has been hosting have moved to this new mail, uh, server. The old server is going down any day now. <clears throat> it's actually the old server is still an old physical machine that we have in a server room here in Stockholm. And the new one is a totally virtual thing. Um, <clears throat> Okay, those were the bug fixes to mention. I We do have 128 ones mentioned in the release notes, so uh, go there and read up. There are a, a bunch of more of them, many more subtle ones, but you know, it depends on where, where what you're doing and where, where your interests are. <clears throat> Going for forward into the future, we're talking most likely that the next version will be 780.0 because we have a bunch of features and changes queued up waiting to get merged and i'm thinking at least some of them will be merged and then we will bump the minor version again as we typically do in most of our releases we bump the version uh, the minor version number okay so some of the things that we are working on that's a sort of pending that might hopefully possibly will be merged for 7.80.0 is um, uh, a feature to uh, avoid overriding local fights for the command line tool, uh, similar to other some other tools have that ability. Uh, we want to provide uh, the <coughs> pretty much all the we have functions for this this stir error case for other APIs in curl. We have for the easy errors, for multi errors, and for share errors. So it adding a curl URL stir error would sort of go in line with the others. So it's been requested and been worked on. We are adding support for SHA-256 host keys for SSH protocols, SFTP and SCP, which is on, uh, that only makes sense because currently we only support MD5 uh, host key so you know bumping up the security level there and going with SHA-256 uh, only makes sense and, and we have a PR in the works <coughs> so just good stuff I, I think that's a pretty straightforward uh, no-nonsense improvement but it'll add a command line switch and it'll add the libcurl options to to set that and we have a, a, a new callback pull request. It's called pre-rec. It's not requested, but it's pre-request. So it's a callback that is called before, immediately before a request, a transfer request is made. Uh, it allows your application to know details about an upcoming transfer immediately before it starts or will be started by curl. More things p coming up that we have pending since before that we might uh, get to uh, or not in this uh, next release is it's been proposed that we implement or merge support for the manage sieve protocol. Sieve being a way to control mail filters on basically on IMAP servers, I think. It's called sieve colon slash slash. Uh, read, up, read up about it. It's an RFC. It has uh, specifications and everything. It's a stand, standard. I don't know exactly at what level. But I'm hesitating a little bit. So I, if you if you feel that this is your thing, come and talk to us and, and uh, 
voice your uh, support or objections against this. There is more hyper improvements coming. Uh, someone su uh, submitted a bug on, on curl hyper doing HTTP2 and it turns out that we are doing, well, inferior or I said incomplete HTTP2 with hyper because of reasons, because we don't use hyper correctly. So I need to fix that. But I'm also, I think we might be missing some um, APIs in, in hyper to do this really good. We'll see about that. There's an ongoing conversation and more more work to be done. So we'll, we'll we just have to figure that out. There are certainly more HTTP3 fixes to be done. I mentioned this several releases in a row now. Uh, we got another bug report file the other day on stuff we don't do for HTTP3 that we should. So I think we have upwards eight or nine known issues now with HTTP3 support. So if you're if you want to join in and help us with some fun bleeding edge protocol stuff. HTTP3 is here. I've mentioned this before, uh, an, an option to set this with the window size, the stream window size, in particular for HTTP2, but I guess it could be used for HTTP3 as well. We have a PR, it's been there for a while. I don't remember exactly why we hadn't merged it, but there were some details uh, pending. We've been talking about WebSockets on the mailing list over the summer. Uh, we have worked on an API proposal for the, there, it's one in the wiki. It's an API that probably works to do uh, WebSockets decently with libcurl. Um, well, with the command line tool as well, probably. Uh, this might be something someone wants to work on. I've, I've not started the work myself and I'm not going to start on it right now because I don't feel that I have the time and energy right now. I'm going to write a separate blog post about it, but I'm, I'm sort of waiting for someone else to, to show their support and help and interest um, or maybe sponsor this work before I will, you know, put in my, my weight and, and effort behind it. So it's there, it might happen, it might not happen right now. We'll see. I've also started a discussion on the mailing list about how to handle the growing number of protocols in curl because we're reaching a critical number that is 32 because we have a 32 bit bit mask at some in one place for protocols and the 32 bit variable type there is a bit of a you know portability uh, api thing to discuss Anyway, going forward, we're talking about the 780.0 release. It is planned and scheduled to happen on November 10, uh, unless something really dramatically happens before then. Um, you know, if there's a critical security release or, or I mean, discovery or, or a really bad bug that, show, that shows up, we might do something earlier. Otherwise, this is, this is the plan. So we're sticking to the schedule. We have eight weeks be between the releases. On this coming Monday, we will open the, um, we'll, you know, unlock the feature freeze, open for new features. The feature window will open, and then we will allow new features and changes to be merged for almost four weeks, and then we will do a feature really a freeze again for the next release. And if you go to this URL, curl.se slash dev slash release notes html you can see all the release notes the pending release notes for the work we've done so far at that point if you go there right now you will still see the one for this release but that will update soon <clears throat> right i i also brought up another thing and i wrote a little blog post about this and you might be interested that we're we're planning on curl. We're planning for a curl eight at some point in the future, and that particular point in the future is going to be March 20, 2023. That is 552 days into the future. And why? Well, it's it's pretty simple actually. We're running out of minor numbers for curl seven, and we're running up to very high numbers and. I want to avoid going to the 100 minor version. So I, I want to avoid 7.100 because I think 7.100 will cause confusion among users because it'll look like 10 or 7.1 or whatever. User is just not uh, used to that high version number. So I'm just going to 
try to avoid going to 7.100. So in order to avoid 7.100, I need to go to version 8 at some point. And so uh, we turn 25 years old on March 20, 2023. On that day, we will release uh, version 8.0.0. And it won't be any particularly, you know, big fun for us, bells and whistles, new things. It'll mostly just be a bump and it'll be new major version number. Um, and we will continue from there on as we've done for the past uh, decade. Uh, so just bump that. It'll, it, we won't break any ABIs or APIs or anything, but we will bump to version 8. Ideally, this will help users on the version 7 to feel a little bit old and outdated. Um, so um, we'll see. This is the plan. I think there's nothing um, big thing, big that so could break it. So this is what we're aiming for. There's a long time to go before that. If we're doing minor version releases, uh, bumps for every release before that, we will reach 7.88 before this date. I mean, the, the, the one before this, that would happen in, I think, in the beginning of February. I think February 1st, 2023, if we go by the schedule. So hopefully, maybe, 7.88.0 will be the last seven uh, curl seven. <clears throat> That's the plan. We will get back to that in, in future um, informations and everything. Uh, as I said in the beginning, uh, we at Wolf SSL offer curl support help with bugs, features, maintenance, anything critical, uh, sort of dedicated private support for your problems. Get in touch if you need our help or when you need it. If you find a bug, go to GitHub <coughs> and submit it. Tell us. And of course, bugs. <coughs> it's fine to also submit bug reports about, you know, spelling errors in the documentation or I don't understand what you mean in the documentation or uh, anything that you think is missing or bad or could use improvement. It doesn't have to be you know, it crashes when I do this. If you find a security problem, or you suspect a security problem in curl, head over to hackerone.com slash curl and submit all the details. It doesn't matter if it, I mean, if it turns out to not be a security problem, it doesn't matter. We will just close that security report and we will deal with it as a regular bug or, or whatever it is instead. So, but if you know that it is a security bug, problem or you suspect it could be go there and tell us about it and we will of course reward you with with the good money if it is a security problem um, there will be some more news about the security bug bounty programming curl going forward because hacker one is introducing something more about that later um, so I just wanted them to emphasize that the bug bounty and a lot of things that we use money for in the Carl project is of course only made possible because we have these fine excellent sponsors so the main sponsors in the curl project they are hacks wolf ssl and fastly providing infrastructure and wolf ssl of course being the one that hires me so i work on curl full time only thanks to wolf ssl being around and doing that <clears throat> then we have a lot of other sponsors chipping in and paying for infrastructure and paying for uh, sponsorships so that enables us to pay for bug bounties, having servers, name servers, CI services and everything. So thank you. They are the ones that key, uh, helps us. They help us keep the boat, the curl boat afloat. So of course, this is curl. We're on curl.se. All the details I uh, explained today uh, will be there and uh, it should be there if you can't find it let me know and it should be there um, this is curl.7790 and um, see you in about eight weeks bye